everyone remembers those iconic marine paint jobs of the early 90s. The Zolotone grey mixed with the fluoro front end. Yellow, green, orange, pink and red. If you see that colour scheme, you know it's a marine. In the past, I've worked on an Eldritch grade and a Pine Mountain, but today I have something newer. Something a little less iconic. I picked up this 2007 Marin B17 late last year, and just looking at it, it's a long way from those early 90s glory days. The fluoro has long gone, and it's been replaced with some dull grey and silver paint jobs. It's not all bad though. This bike comes with an upgraded Shimano Dior XT 9 speed drivetrain, some brand new 2.4 inch Continentals, and the ultimate in comfort, a charge spoon saddle. It's still sort of boring to look at though, so today I'm going to reincarnate the 91 Pine Mountain, a rigid rider with a classic paint job. So grab a snack and enjoy this new build. Okay, that will work. <laughs> Gotta find where I put my school flag. Oh, wow, I just had by the stand. <coughs> Ow. Okay. All those bones are dry. 
Oh wow, those bearings. <sighs> no grease was put into these bearings. WTB clamp buttons. Alright, fair enough. And here we are, the bike is stripped down and it's on to the next stage of hiring a squeaking hamster to clean all my parts while I wait for the frame to be done. Rather than mess about with paints during the winter, I decided to take the frame, fork and stem to a local powder coating shop to get everything Cerakoted. For those that don't know, Cerako is a process similar to powder coating, but it goes on a lot thinner. I believe it's a bit more durable parts don't have to get as hot when they're baked on and it just looks so much better. It ended up being a three week wait so during that time I also contacted Retro Decals and had some new decals made up in the style of the 91 Pine Mountain. Let's talk fork though. This bike came with a RockShox Tora which according to the 2007 specs was adjustable from 85mm to a massive 130mm of travel. That's pretty impressive but the fork is now in my spare stock, so I'll have to look into that at another time. This build is going rigid. I've chosen to use an Airbike 29 er rigid fork that gives me an axle to crown of 440mm. It's slightly less than the Tora at around 480mm, so it will change the geometry slightly. I very crudely worked out the angles of the head tube and seat tube with the Tora, and it came out to 68 degrees for the head and 71 for the seat. Dropping the height with the rigid roughly changes the head tube to 71 degrees and the seat tube to 73 degrees. That's all measured from a horizontal plane between the axles by the way. Still, it's a little bit of info for the geometry Greeks. That's if I've measured it right. In theory, the bike might feel a bit better climbing but will feel a bit twitchier at speed. As for the bars, I've ditched the riser bars the bike came with and bought some on one Jeffs. These bars are a little bit more of an adventure slash gravel design, I guess. They're fairly wide and swept back, so it should give a little relief for the wrists on long days in the saddle. It also has a little section for the front for a snack back. The most important type of bag. Now this cleaning process took a good while, the XT drive drain had been caked in grease so it was a bit tricky to remove with just muck off. It took a lot of scrubbing to get all the grime off and at some points I added a bit of thinners to help the process. The parts came out looking fantastic though. It's a time consuming process to strip everything down and clean them thoroughly but your parts will thank you. Even sped up to a thousand percent, this footage is going on for four minutes. So I hope you enjoy this cleaning session. It'll finish any minute now.
deeds. That space to run and then on and then on. The Jeff.
Okay, that's in line. It's come down a smidgen. Yeah, it's pretty straight. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. No, any spaces. Any spaces. That tolerance though. And I should say at this point I was having compatibility issues with the front disc. The B17 came with a 180mm rotor, but the fork could only accept 160mm. The two forks were also different mount types, so I had to mess about yeah. with trying to get the right amount of spaces in there so the caliper would sit right. All worked out in the end though.
hand up to the top. And there we have it, my 90s Pine Mountain inspired B17. I love the way this turned out. The fluoro orange and the grey are such an iconic paint job, and switching the fork to a rigid has given this bike a new lease of life. I've taken it out on a few spins to work and back, when I have to say, it's one of my comfier bikes. Despite the frame being a medium, it looks a little on the small side, but I guess that's just more of the modern hardtail geometry creeping in. It wasn't quite done here though. My rear brake hose needed lengthening so I had to get my local bike shop to sort that and come to think of it, now it's done I might just buy the matching XT brakes for it. If you've enjoyed the build today please make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Doing all three really helps the algorithm. That's it though. Again, I really hope you enjoy the build. I'll see you in the next one.